Hey guys, welcome to Remixed Reality. I'm Corey Spencer. We're going to do a product review, a series of video reviews um, throughout the blog. And what's really exciting about today is this is not only our first review of a product, but it's a doozy. We're going to be talking about the HoloLens. This, my friends, is the HoloLens. Actually, if you put it on like this, I'll be doing it in a second. Um, for those of you who have never heard of the HoloLens before, this is one of the first major products around augmented reality. So virtual reality is totally submersive. You put on a headset. Um, this is virtual reality. This is the HTC Vive. You put this on well, along with headsets and controllers and you're totally submerged into a different reality. Augmented reality, as you can see, is a little bit different. You can still see everything around you, but it's going to inject holograms and interactive applications into your reality. It is pretty fantastic. Now a few things about this before I actually put it on and start using it. This is the entire headset. This is the HoloLens. It is an entire computer that you put on your face. Um, it is not tethered to another PC. It is not tethered to my phone. It is uh, totally self-contained. So it is a self-contained, untethered device. It is literally wireless. Um, wireless both in the fact that it has Wi-Fi and the fact that it doesn't have a giant cord that ties you to something. Some of the other things, um, this, is, this is still technically a develop, developer kit, but it is pretty solid. It, it's really solid. It's far, um, far higher quality than like the original DKs that we saw from Oculus Rift. I mean, this, this is pretty close to consumer ready. Uh, it has some speakers. This is what the red little things here are. They do a really good job of creating um, surround sound. As you have them on, you can hear things around you if, if there's a requirement for something to, for you to hear something from behind you or to the side. Um, you can hear it really well. Those around you can kind of hear it, but it does a pretty good job of getting you some audio without being too intrusive for everybody else. You can control the audio with some buttons right here. You can also control how bright the holograms are with these other two buttons. Um, you can plug it in to charge it. And then a lot of the magic is right here in the front. There's a whole bunch of sensors and cameras as well as some special lenses. And that's about it. I mean, that's those are the basics to get this thing going. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it on I'm going to put it on my face, I'm going to log in, and then we're actually going to jump into the HoloLens. So you turn it on with a button right here, that's how you turn it on, and uh, there's a dial to increase the size for people with giant heads, like myself. You can wear it over your glasses, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm putting it on. Now when you first put it on, you actually have to wear it um, a little higher than you thought you would. So when I, I've, I've demoed the HoloLens with maybe 20 or 30 people over the last uh, couple of weeks. I've had it for the last two weeks uh, doing evaluations for work. And um, everybody first puts it on a little bit low and you want it a little high, otherwise you end up looking down your nose at the holograms. And <clears throat> what you can't see right now, I'm seeing a password prompt. And so I'm gonna log in. And I at first I thought maybe I would cut this part out, but I think you guys should see just how cool you look like first let's let's just take a second let's just address how incredibly cool I look with this computer on my face just kidding it, we, it looks ridiculous but it is really cool so I, I don't know how many of these you'll see out in the wild of people just walking like hanging out in the bus with something like this on their face but I guess I guess Bluetooth make you look like a moron anyway so you might as well go the full distance and throw a computer on your face. I'm gonna click in here to the password prompt. And this is how you click, by the way. When you use your head to move the cursor, and then you click like that. And what you can't see is I'm now seeing a keyboard. And I'm eventually gonna start recording from the HoloLens so you guys can see everything. Um, make sure this is on straight. And so I'm gonna put in my password right now. It's a little long. I'm a security conscious person. Oops, already messed up. If you can imagine 
and a Starbucks in San Francisco coming soon is really annoying people wearing things like this flicking the air. Still logging in. I want you guys to get the full effect because this is what we're going to see in the future. The responsiveness is really good. And so I finished logging in. And now it's going to map my surroundings. So it's literally mapping my reality as I look around. And uh, I'm going to cut the video here and then cut to an actual recording inside the HoloLens. So I'm now recording from within the HoloLens. You're seeing what I'm seeing, or at least you're seeing some of what I'm seeing. I'll explain that in just a second. I'm going to start moving my head. I'm going to try and move my head slowly because I've watched a recording of myself doing this, and it's like Cyber Blair Witch. It's it can get really shaky really quick. So this is this is you know my desk. Here's my computers. This is my my actual monitors. I'm now going to move over. I'm going to look over. Here's here's another monitor from another one of my computers. And as I look up, you'll see yet more monitors, except they're not really there. These are windows floating in space. Uh, in fact, they're web browsers. I can click over here and start this web browser and activate it. And it's a fully functioning web browser that is just kind of hanging out in the middle of space. And that is pretty fantastic. So I'll have it load adobe.com because that site is awesome. Uh, we also have Netflix over here, so I could come over here and I could be watching Netflix literally anywhere. Um, as if I just have a TV hanging out wherever I want it. And let me log in here. Oh, I must have my password incorrect. Doesn't really matter. This is how I would remove a window. And I can come over here and say I'm going to adjust this one and I can move it and it's mapped the walls. So if I try to move it too far, it stops at my wall. That is really very cool. And then I can come here and I can say, well, we want more like this size of browser or this size of browser. I mean, it could make um, a lot of really cool simulations for mobile devices. Pretty cool, I think. Uh, so we got this, here's my window. I say I'm done, I click done, and I could come in here and start using it as a web browser. And I could say, yeah, let's learn more about Adobe. It does take a second to start clicking things and get used to that. Let's try, there we go. Um, my Wi-Fi is a little slow today. But as I start moving around, you'll see the edges are just floating in space and they stay pretty much exactly where they're supposed to. And I've watched the recordings before and sometimes they look shakier in the recordings, but they look really clear here. Now, that's just a monitor, kind of cool. It'd be great to have like 500 monitors. Instead of having like a bunch of tabs, you literally have a bunch of screens everywhere you look. That'd be pretty cool, but let's actually look at something a little more three-dimensional. So this, is a catalog of all the holograms I would be able to pull out. And here's some of them down here. So I have a unicorn head, and as I move around, you'll see that they stay pretty well mapped to where they're supposed to. We have a zombie with a cake. We have a monkey eating pizza. And here's that full catalog I told you about, where I could go in and select any of these and place them somewhere. I'll do that in just a second. Some of these are animated. Oh, it looks like I accidentally selected one already. So let's remove him. And I moved. I, so it gets a little tricky here. So it looks like I, I can go here and move this one, and and I removed the wrong one. So I can let's make him big. Place him where I want him. Till I'm done. And now when I click on it, this one's actually animated. And I can move around it. Uh, 
Alright, that's enough. We have a monkey. Let's make our monkey a little bit bigger. Monkey is eating pizza here. So we can take a look at that monkey. And the monkey is also animated. I don't know if you can hear it, but he eats his pizza very loudly. Now part of what you don't see right now is there's an issue with field of vision. The best way to explain it is if you look at this video that you're looking at, this entire video, that's your entire field of view. All right, so this is what you can see when you're looking. And the part that has the hologram or the ability to see a hologram is actually maybe about this big. Right, it's about the size of a deck of cards in front of your face. And so when you're looking around at a larger hologram, I don't know, like a giant uh, monkey eating pizza, you end up having to look around the whole thing. And, and even though you can see more, to see the hologram, you actually have to really move your head. So that's the, that's the part of the field of vision. It, I, I'll say I've, um, like I said, I've, I've demoed this to about 20 people at least. And it's one of the very first things that they say. They go, ooh, that's cool. And the very next thing they say is, Oh, the field of vision is really small. Uh, I have to move my head around a lot. So I'm assuming from a hardware perspective, that's where a lot of the investment in the HoloLens should go. You don't have to have 100% field of view, but if they could double it, it'd be really nice. Now, that being said, it is still incredibly impressive. I'm going to stop this guy from eating because he's going to make dry heat from just listening to him. Um, we also have Spaceman, and we have his little... Let's just hide the menu here. We've got the... Uh, the satellite that he's looking for. And again, I can move around him and he stays as if he's really there. It shudders a little bit, but shuddering a little bit considering I have a whole bunch of holograms. It's calculating everything it needs to to keep it incredibly still. If I get too close, I kind of go through it. But as an interactive hologram, it's incredibly impressive. So that's it, folks. This, this is the HoloLens. Here, I'll take it off. I've worn this. You get about two hours of battery life of, of average use. Um, you do end up with a really cool band across your forehead when you take it off. So everyone can know that you have a HoloLens. It'll be like this new status symbol. Like, dude, check out the band on that guy's forehead. He spent hours in his HoloLens. Um, I have noticed if the longer I wear it, it kind of starts to feel a little warm. And I don't know if that's just like the fact that I have something on my face or um, if the computer itself is becoming hotter. But all of that being said, considering that this is still technically a developer kit, um, it is an unbelievably cool piece of hardware and software. And uh, I am sold. I, I love VR. I love it. I think it's amazing technology. Um, but I really am becoming more convinced that augmented reality is something that could really uh, be embedded into our everyday lives. And this is kind of the beginning of it. I'll show you some more videos coming up where I, I show you some of the games. I'll review some of the games. I'll review some of the apps that are coming out with the HoloLens. But also some of the ways that we can use it that maybe you hadn't thought of before. Um, and that's where I really think it's going to embed itself in our lives. So thanks for joining me, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.